Welcome, I'm Antonietta Catanzariti, the Assistant Curator for the Engineer Your East at the Smithsonian National Museum of Asian Art. I welcome you to the exhibition, Ancient Yemen, Incense, Art and Trade. The exhibition highlights the economic impact of incense in ancient Yemen between the first century BCE and the second century CE. The profitable trade of frankincense and myrrh allowed the ancient caravan kingdoms to build monumental buildings and cemeteries. The fine alabaster statues and metalworks produced by artists from ancient Yemen display masterful skills and the blending of local and classical motifs, underscoring the region's remarkable artistic and cultural cosmopolitanism. The exhibition highlights the fragile cultural heritage of Yemen. Since 2014, the ongoing civil war of Yemen has caused immeasurable human suffering and has damaged much of the country's cultural heritage. As the conflict drags on, the slow eradication of Yemen history continues. With this exhibition, the visitor will be able to learn about the diverse culture of ancient Yemen, which is the result of the incense trade that ran through the region and connected ancient Yemen through the different areas, the neighboring regions, but as well with the west and east. The exhibition holds important objects such as the Marian head, an alabaster statue, a material that was heavily used for the production of funerary stilis. The visitor will also be able to see the metalwork production that was produced in the Kataban Kingdom. The Kataban Kingdom was located at Timna, where many of these objects come from. There you will experience and observe some of the most important artistic production from this kingdom. Among the funerary statues, you will also be able to see a woman head made of alabaster, a material that is found locally in ancient Yemen. The alabaster statue shows a slight smile, but also white eyes. The blue that you see around the bitumen eyes is probably glass or lapis lazuli. This is also one of the few examples of funerary statues with headdress made of plaster. The funerary head was found in the cemetery at Tima, the capital of the Kataban Kingdom. Nearby, the golden amulet was found. The golden amulet is inscribed with a South Arabian inscription that identifies the goddess a lot. There's a combination of a half moon and as well a solar disk. The amulet was really meant to protect the person who was wearing this jewelry. As you can see at the level of the neck, there are two perforations. Although the two pieces were not found nearby, it is possible that such jewelry were meant to decorate alabaster statues such as this, hence the two perforation at the level of the neck. While the women head is one of the best examples of funerary sculptures, the two boys riding the lion are one of the best examples of Yemeni metalwork skills. The two sculptures were found in a residential area at the site of Timna and they're dated to the first century BCE and the first century CE. The South Arabian inscription found at the bottom of the two sculptures identified the owners of the residence. These were meant to decorate the house of Tuwaib and his son Akrab, most probably two wealthy traders. The two boys riding the lion or associated to the ritual of Dionysus. Recalling classical motif and local traditions, it blends the two cultures. As a result, this is a clear example of Yemeni cosmopolitanism. With the increase of the trading activities and acquired knowledge of navigating the monsoon winds, the Arabian Peninsula became crucial to the development of the Indian Ocean trade. The Parables of the Eritrean Sea, a guide to the trade routes written in the first century CE, provides us with a glimpse of the complexity of this trade. The Indian figurine from the second and third century CE found at the site of Kotwari in Oman, a site that was part of the Hadramaut caravan kingdom, offers an archeological attestation of the Arabian Peninsula's connection with South Asia. I invite you all to learn about the art of the caravan kingdoms and experience the thriving international art produced in ancient Yemen as it is reflected in this exhibition.